Orang Mawa Scripted A cryptid is a term given to a creature or being who is largely mythological and has not been proven to exist by the scientific community. However, several creatures once given the cryptid name have turned out to be not as fictitious as first believed. For example, the Colacanth and the Akapi were once cryptids and have now been scientifically acknowledged to exist. The Orang Mawa's cryptid of the jungle of Jawa in Malaysia is another example of a being that was thought to be the stuff of legends, but there have been so many reported sightings that entire web groups have sprung up dedicated to proving its existence. This creature is rumoured to be a hominid about 10 feet tall, walking on two legs and covered in black fur. The locals of the jungle, the Orang Asli people, call the Orang Mawas Hantu Jarang Jiji, which means snaggletooth ghost, and they have many legends which tell of the creature being sighted feeding on fish and raiding orchards. Although sightings of the Orang Mawas have been reported regularly as far back as 1871, with legend and myth dating the sightings back even further, many believe that it is not a cryptid at all, but merely a surviving relative of the Gigantopithecus, which was an enormous ancient ape. Still, others dismiss the sightings entirely and claim that it is simply a sun bear, a black bear that feeds on fruit and is native to the area, being mistaken for something more sinister. Verified sightings of the Orang Mawas have occurred since the 1950s, with a highly publicised sighting occurring as recently as 2005 that gave a large amount of credence to believers in the cryptid species. Three local workers clearing land all reported seeing three Orang Mawas, two adults and a child, walking along the river together, as though they were a family. Upon later investigation, along the riverbank, were large humanoid footprints up to a foot and a half long, where the Mawas family had supposedly been sighted. The momentum of the mystery surrounding the creatures truly took off several months later at the beginning of 2006, when a local Malaysian newspaper published photographs of a fresh tar footprint that was believed to be from the Orang Mawas. Later that same month, Johor authorities announced that they would be sending an official government expedition to try to prove the existence of the Mowers, and in doing so, became the first country to have an officially sanctioned hunt for a mysterious hominid. Some reports from the expedition claimed that they found and captured an Orang Mawas later that same year, but the official report denied it. Orang Mawas fanatics believe that sightings of the creature are becoming more common as humans carve into the jungle and destroy its home and it is forced to expose itself to humans, meaning that it is only a matter of time before its existence is proven once and for all, while others simply believe the sightings are misidentified apes and orangutans. Only time will tell whether this mysterious cryptid is truly out there in the jungles of Malaysia, and for now, the search continues. The Yowie the Yowie, or more commonly referred to as the Australian Bigfoot, is a large beast that stands on two legs roughly 7 to 12 feet tall and has the general appearance of that of a large ape-like creature. Sightings of this beast have persisted for eons since the time of the Aborigines and their ancient mythological folklore. What is all the more startling about this urban legend is that even to this day, many Australians claim to have encountered the Yowie and many others have started their own research groups looking into the logistics and evidence of these mythological beasts. Ancient Aboriginal myths created the Yowie as being beasts from the time before man and that the Yowie were the original inhabitants of the Australian continent, but were completely driven out of their native lands by men that came there to settle. Interestingly, this could very well be possible evidence of the Homo sapiens driving out Neanderthals, a species similar to that of humans and were believed to share an ancient common ancestor, but later went extinct roughly 35,000 years ago under mysterious causes. Going down the Yowie rabbit hole leads to further startling theories surrounding their existence. From Australian government officials covering up further evidence to Yowies being involved in many of the extraterrestrial and unidentified flying object sightings all around Australia. There are even subgroups of the Yowie community that defend the idea that Yowie might be an alien species visiting the Earth and that the Bigfoot monsters and variations 
could all be this extraterrestrial species. The Yowie creature is commonly encountered in Queensland, Australia, with many of the eyewitnesses saying that this creature is unlike anything they've seen before. One woman claimed that she saw one outside of her house and that when she went out to investigate afterwards, a bad odour was left in the air. She didn't manage to take any photographs as the encounter lasted only for a few minutes. However, she describes the creature as looking like a tall humanoid that had a thick layer of hair. Although the Yowie creature is said to just live in Australia, others have suggested that the Yowie and Bigfoot creature are actually the same. The mysterious Yowies are still being reported by the general public to this day. Civilizations that used to live within the Amazon Since the 16th century, we have held the warped belief that the Amazon rainforest was largely untouched and entirely natural. It was a common assumption that prior to the Spanish invasions, only small groups of nomadic people lived intermittently along the Amazon riverbanks and estuary. Though, new research suggests otherwise, revealing vast interconnected villages near the Amazon. Areas of the Amazon that previously could not be explored have been made accessible due to the development of satellite imagery. This allows for even the densest areas of the forest to be explored, letting archaeologists search for the ancient geoglyphs that indicate the presence of civilizations. Geoglyphs are art pieces formed through the moving of the landscape, such as arrangements of stones. The team, funded in part by National Geographic, had a set of 24 coordinates they considered leads, all of which proved to be positive. One in particular, however, proved to be incredibly useful, leading scientists to ceramics and charcoal, which testing indicated comes from 1410 CE. Trends also seem to show that the geoglyphs are most likely to be found in places on high elevation, such as the hills within the Amazon. This new research shows that the civilizations had settled in a wider space than we thought, as people lived further than the riverside with settlements spanning over 1,100 miles. Another conclusion drawn from this study is that the population densities predicted through computer modeling were higher than thought previously. It was thought, prior to this research, that 2 million lived in the Amazon rainforest. But now we know 500,000 to 1 million live within only 7% of the Amazon basin. A previous idea was that after the European conquests, those who lived in the forest had passed away due to diseases and genocide. Primary author of the research project, Jose Iriarte, archaeologist from the University of Exeter, said in relation to this, we need to re-evaluate the history of the Amazon. Other information we know surrounding the history of the civilizations living in the Amazon is fairly limited. The Inca Empire was at its height of productivity and growth when the Spanish, French, Dutch and English invasions began to occur. Inca's societies were based in Cusco, Peru, and these small societal groups and communities stretched into the Amazon lowlands. The assumption that the rainforest was untouched and the ignoring of these groups stems from the European invasions of early modern Europe. The diseases brought over by these new groups led to rapid loss of lives, effectively erasing the appearance of the hard work and lifestyle of these indigenous groups, as the rainforest appeared uninhabited to newcomers. With the European conquests, many indigenous people became victims in forced labour camps, eventually resulting in the tragedy of enslavement and genocides of these remarkable groups of people. Lake Nyos Disaster Natural disasters such as hurricanes, tornadoes and tsunamis are relatively common, and the media is frequently filled with stories of their paths of destruction and subsequent loss of life. Those who live in areas where these natural disasters are frequent are aware of the risks and often take precautions in the event of such a disaster. However, many other types of natural disasters are much more frightening and costly to life, yet are so rare that people hardly ever consider them. One such occurrence is a limnic eruption, which infamously caused what is known as the Lake Nyos disaster on the 21st of August 1986. A limnic eruption is powered by dissolved carbon dioxide that builds up within the deep waters of a lake until the pressure causes it to explode upward and outward. This explosion generates a poisonous gas cloud that can suffocate humans and animals in the vicinity, as well as potentially triggering associated events like tsunamis. The Lake Nyos disaster was one of the worst examples of such a tragedy. 
as between 100,000 and 300,000 tons of noxious carbon dioxide exploded from the depths of the lake in northwestern Cameroon. Some experts even estimate that there could have been as much as 1.6 million tons of carbon dioxide making up the gas cloud that formed as it was expelled from the lake at almost 100 km per hour. This cloud, being heavier than the surrounding air, quickly sank over the nearby villages, replacing the oxygen and immediately suffocating hundreds of people, livestock and animals that were within 25 km of the lakefront. In total, this tragedy took the lives of over 1,700 individuals and 3,500 livestock. The explosion generated a 25-meter wave across the surface of the lake that crashed to one shore, helping to power the thick gas cloud that moved down the valley. Hundreds of victims in the nearby villages of Nyos, Cam, Char and Sabum were suffocated instantly in their sleep. Thousands more fled from the area and were able to escape but later developed associated issues such as respiratory problems, painful lesions and even paralysis. Luckily, limnic eruptions are incredibly rare and are frequently triggered by a preceding earthquake, volcano or seismic activity. Additionally, they typically only occur within lakes that have already displayed elements of such activity and are therefore known as limnically active or exploding lakes. In the wake of the Lake Nyos disaster, experts engaged in multiple studies about how such a disaster could be prevented in the future, including implementing methods that help to keep the levels of carbon dioxide within a safe range by venting out the CO2 through pumps. A degassing tube system has been installed within the lake since 2001, and it was recently determined that the tubes were able to keep the levels of carbon dioxide at a steady state that dramatically reduces the risk of an eruption. Additionally, the study of this tragic disaster has prompted officials to analyze other limnically active lakes to determine the risk of a limnic explosion and several additional lakes were found to be supersaturated with carbon dioxide and subsequently underwent preventative and corrective measures to hopefully counteract a future incident. Supermassive Black Hole Eruption Near Earth the thing about black holes is that they are hard to see and generally exist millions of light years away from Earth. But recently, astronomers were able to observe and capture images of one of the most comprehensive and visible black hole eruptions to date. This was accomplished through recordings taken by the Murchison Widefield Array Telescope in the outback of Western Australia of the radio emissions from the black hole closest to Earth which is located about 12 million light-years away in the galaxy Centaurus A. This eruption was not a small one by any means either. The emissions were measured as spanning 8 degrees across the sky, which is roughly the length of 16 of Earth's moons laid side by side in space. This supermassive black hole, which is the closest known actively feeding black hole to Earth, lies at the heart of Centaurus A and contains an almost unbelievable mass of over 50 million of our suns. Its emissions span an enormous area and generate radio waves as material is sucked into the heart of the black hole. Dr. Benjamin McKinley, lead author of a new study detailing the findings of these images, explains that the emissions form a disk around the black hole, and as the matter gets ripped apart getting close to the black hole, powerful jets form on either side of the disk, ejecting most of the material back out into space, to distances of probably more than a million light-years. Previous radio observations could not handle the extreme brightness of the jets, and details of the larger area surrounding the galaxy were distorted, but our new image overcomes these limitations. Essentially, researchers hope to learn more about black holes and their emissions through these incredibly clear images, which combined much of the latest technology in order to generate one of the clearest examples of black hole emissions that scientists have been able to obtain to date. This new information has already spawned several new ideas and corroborated the earlier theory known as the chaotic cold accretion theory, which is relevant to several fields of science. Black holes are viewed by the emissions that they put out and the gravitational pull that they exert on surrounding objects. This means that the dense, lively holes are all but invisible because they absorb all wavelengths, so researchers count themselves incredibly lucky that they were able to capture such clear images of the enormous emissions from this black hole. They hope that they will be able to use this information in order to gain a clearer understanding of what makes up black holes and how they operate within the universe and space, 
leading to the eventual demystification of one of the most enduring mysterious elements of the cosmos. But what do you make of these new discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.